are listening to Aim Higher, a Catholic podcast designed to instruct and to encourage the daily practice of our faith. Pax et bonum, peace and good to you all. This is Aim Higher. I am Father Anthony, that has not changed. And I had to think for a moment, who am I? Who am I and who are you? Oh, those are the questions to ask. Uh, boy, I'm a little too tired to be poetical. And I'm here with Sister Catherine, um, who needs no introduction except the one that I just gave her. Um, Thank you, Father. <laughs> you're welcome, Sister. So on today's episode, one thing we want to talk about, it, it, it's a topic that we thought, people would find interesting because not everybody is involved uh, in the goings on of, of the, of the sanctuary of the sacristy and to get a little background of, of what it is that a sacristan actually does. Um, and, 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 and the, uh, the duties and the rules that a sacristan has to follow uh, along with uh, some of the mishaps, um, <laughs> all of the funny stories that happens uh, when you're a sacristan, and uh, basically you 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 have to um, grin and bear your mistakes and mm -hmm. be, re be, yes. be ready to get corrected. Uh, it's happened a, a few times um, as a sacristan. I I I, I was sacristan really twice. Um, when I was in the minor seminary, I was made the sacristan out in Rochester. And then when I went to the major seminary, I was the sacristan down in Lubbock, Texas. So uh, altogether, I have about six years of experience doing it. But I still do sacristan duties because I don't have a full-time sacristan. I have people are able to come in and help me to do um, like the linens and um, some polish, some like major general polishing. But um, the day-to-day -day things that need to be looked after, I pretty much have to do myself. And the problem when, the, when it's left to the priest, especially when the priest has a very, 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 very busy schedule, um, things do get neglected, which shouldn't be neglected. And uh, it, it's not because um, we are ignoring what our Holy Father, St. Francis, um, insisted upon. He insisted that the friars um, take special care of the church itself, of the building. And it, 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 and it was um, uh, for him, I'm trying to think of the rule itself, because he has a whole part where he mentions that, um, <clears throat> that... Uh, if he ever found uh, any poor priests, that he would, you know, do whatever he could um, to provide them with um, good uh, sacred vessels, um, vestments, and altar linens. And it was one of the things that even the the poor clares, one the, probably their major um, duties that they made altar linens, um, uh, playing a huge part, uh, which plays a huge part in the mass itself. Um, so these these were uh, so we have a bit of a Franciscan perspective, and not just command uh, at, uh, from the church itself, but from the order um, to have a great care for the cleanliness of the church and making it look appealing because it is the house of God. Mm -hmm. And you keep that in mind. Um, you 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 would want to, or you should, um, put more care to to the church itself than you would your own home. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the type of attitude you'd want to have. Uh, that's why it was always ideal if a sacristan was what what meant to be usually a, a brother or, or, or a cleric in minor orders would have been a sacristan. Um, I, I think even an acolyte, um, the proper term is sexton. A sexton is, is who we refer to as. And... Um, but but then you did also have deacons and subdeacons had special duties. I mean, it was actually um, the duty of a subdeacon. And, and if you read the ordination of a subdeacon, it expresses that part of his duty is to tend to the altar itself, 
altar linens and everything that um, uh, other linens that are used at mass, like the corporal and purificators, making sure they are tended to, making sure if they're worn out, they're properly destroyed, um, which is usually done, which is burning. Um, mm -hmm. And then and new ones are made and, and just tending to the needs. But of course, um, as the church has expanded uh, to different regions of the world, and you do not have an abundance of subdeacons who are available, these duties, just like that of servers who serve mass, who are not um, in minor orders or not acolytes, are allowed to serve. So also the duties have been passed on to some secular uh, people, lay people, to take on the duties. But you would be well you would be preferred if you could at least have it um, as a sister or a brother to do it. Mm -hmm. um, fortunately, here we've always had uh, a, a brother or a sister uh, or a, a sister as that. We had Sister Antonina was the sacristan when we were growing up at, uh, in when the church was in 50, uh, 52nd of Lisbon in Milwaukee. Um, and then it was taken over by uh, Sister Francis, who's third order. Now she's third order secular, but she's still sister in her Franciscan. Um, and it, it's, it is a commitment it is it, there's time taking, but I think there should, there's also a bit of passion and a love for it. And if mm -hmm. you, if, if you realize that this, you're taking such a great part in the sacrifice itself. And, yes. and, and, and I guess I'm going to, just say one last thing for uh, so we can actually make this a discussion, sister, not just me <laughs> talking, but it, it's one of the reasons why in many churches they had the altar and rosary society um, where you had the women getting together and they took over the preparations, making sure that there, there, there were proper altar linens for mass were made. Um, the flowers and stuff were always prepared uh, for the altar and that's how they contribute to the sacrifice of the mass in a very direct manner. Um, so the idea that women are totally excluded from divine services um, is not entirely true. No, they won't. They are. They won't be the celebrant of the service, but they're a very integral part. And it, without them, it really could not happen uh, without a great detriment to the other duties that a priest. Or, uh, or or a deacon or, or would have, um, you know, to, what he has to teach and you know, administer the sacraments to be taken away by having to iron all of his, uh, <laughs> to iron all of his purificators and his corporals and and doing that. I mean that that's a uh, that's a big weight off. And if it's is, <laughs> if it is a responsibility, um, not, not, not just a responsibility. I think it's an honor be able to do that I, and that's one of the things i think we really want to convey yes definitely uh definitely an honor and a privilege anyone mm -hmm. who's had a part in doing the linens or, or sewing making vestments um i know it's mm -hmm. easy to sometimes feel like it's a burden um, yeah. i know these things aren't easy to do um even any of those who have made tunics or habits for our priests um i know <laughs> it's it's a very grateful for that, but, um, because quite honestly, it, there really isn't a whole lot of time for them to do it. And also mm -hmm. it is, it, it's something that you get to do and it's part of, um, our faith too, and making sure that these things are done properly. Mm -hmm. Um, but getting back to more specifically the linens, things that are used for mass. Um, I would say that until I became sacristan, I didn't really have a deep knowledge of all the things or the, or even the symbolism behind what, what they're for and how purposeful mm -hmm. uh, they are. And in learning about that actually has cultivated more of appreciation for math. So when I'm teaching um, the children in my classes, I, I do put some emphasis on these things as much as I can little tidbits. I was like, yeah, this was neat. I never realized it. Maybe I was told when I was younger, I really don't remember. Um, but I try to put these things into place because you never know what might strike an interest in that child to help them dive deeper into it. Like, well, take for instance, the corporal, the okay. corporal is 
fold it in a very specific way and for good reason because during mass the consecrated host rests on it so the consecrated host is jesus and so it's on um it's on the corporal and so when it's put away it's folded so that just in case there might be some particles of the sacred species that it's treated with respect mm -hmm. um and and i never realized that no until... chance a, 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 a lesser chance of any particles slipping out the way it's folded. right yeah right yep. Um, yep yep and it's just it's just not something i realized and i remember when i was because i slowly started taking on sacristan duties and I remember the bishop explaining it to me, like unfolding it and folding it and unfolding it with care because of that purpose. Mm -hmm. And it's just something that we don't think about, you know, outside of those, you know, outside of the sacristan or the priest, because we're just, we're not that involved. But I think it's something interesting to know. So I like to kind of, the corporal is probably one of my favorite things to talk about because when you really think about it, every time I unfold it for mass, getting set up for mass, I do feel, I don't want to say that overly emotional, but there's just something there to realize that just yesterday, our Lord was resting right here on the spot. Mm -hmm. You know, we, it's very easy to kind of forget what actually truly happens when you attend mass. Well, you know, I, I remember hearing like, there's this, this story. I, I I don't know. Did you tell me the story? Probably. It was uh that um, I think this was in Mexico during the uh, uh, Mexican revolutions, and and uh, I, I, I don't I think forget. it was Mexico. Do you uh, know there, what I'm you know what I'm talking about? The, well, I give a story involving the corporal. So okay, maybe I'll okay, just maybe that, that, right yeah, now. you tell it because I think you're the one who told me the story. I, I actually think it was probably somewhere in Europe, and it was during some sort of revolution. So to say mass publicly was forbidden. Probably and, Ireland. Um, and and it was also harder for smaller towns to actually even get a priest regularly be, to begin with, but even more so when this happened. And mm -hmm. so this little town. Uh, the story the story is that there was this man who went and visited this little town and it was a Sunday and knowing that, you know, they aren't going to have mass because of the persecution. Uh, the man he was staying with invited him to where they all get together and pray. And they met at this big house mm -hmm. and, you know, everybody kneeling in prayer. And after they finished saying the rosary, an older gentleman gets up, he goes to where they have it laid out, um, you know, candles, flowers, you know, trying to make the most of their situation. Mm -hmm. um, and then you see him take out this white cloth and he holds it up, you know, but it's very delicate. He holds it up and said, here is the corporal that was used at the last mass that was said here. And so, and to recognize that this was the last time Jesus was present in the Holy Sacrament. Mm -hmm. And, um, so every Sunday the people would get together and they would, bring out that corporal. And obviously they're not adoring the corporal. They're mm -hmm. adoring the fact that God was there. Um, Jesus was there. And, mm -hmm. and that's what got them through it's what it represents. It's what it re yeah. That representation got them through that really difficult time of not having the sacraments, the Holy mass regularly. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that that was a really beautiful story. I'm not telling it well, or I can't remember where I, I read it. I think you told it very well. It <laughs> just I mean... is there. Um, the written story is definitely more beautiful. You were telling it better than I was starting to. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. But that just really struck me is how easily we can take things for granted. You know, mm -hmm. everything that is used for mass has a purpose and they're, hand, they're, they're treated delicately. Even, yeah. um, you can't even just take used linens and just throw them in the wash machine. They actually have to be treated by the priest, um, I don't know if there's mm -hmm. some sort of minor orders possibly. I don't know if you as deacon, you could. Major order. Yeah, deacon, yeah, okay. you could. You could process. They have to be processed before they can be thrown in the wash. But my process, they have to be rinsed in water uh, and then wringed out. And then that water has to be discarded properly too, which mm -hmm. is usually yeah. put into the ground. Yeah. Uh, so You can't just yeah. throw it down the drain because this, um, you know, the purificator is used to purify the chalice. And what's mm -hmm. in the chalice precious uh, blood right so and we don't but, it's sometimes we just we don't it's it's very easy not to think about it this way because we're just either we don't know well, or um 
you know, it, it, it's like it brings up the question that I've been I've been asked, and and I've asked the question because preparing to be uh, preparing for the priesthood and um, trying to prepare for any sort of possibility uh, is it what what do you do if as you're distributing communion and the, and the sacred host falls to the ground like something happens what do you do now this is a this is a thing where you a sacristan does come into play here because um you have to mark the spot where the blessed sacrament fell uh, uh you you would pick it up the host um but then you mark the spot usually with a linen um, mm -hmm. What I've done usually it's quicker because I usually just have a server. I say go get the towel for lavabo, bring that here, mm -hmm. and I just set it there. It marks the general spot, and then after I finish mass. After I finish mass, I come back out uh, with a a purificator, probably a newer one, um, and then I purify the area with holy water. Soak it up and clean, you know, just clean up in in just the general area of it, mm -hmm. and uh, your and and then, you know, actually I have used lavabo towel for that purpose, but then that lavabo towel is put in with the purificators, mm -hmm. you know, not just with the other lavabo towels, which mm -hmm. do not need the priest to um, right. process them, as you said, right. uh, nor do the amices, which is the uh, the the white cloth that goes over the priest's head. Those do not need, or the albs for that matter, do not need the priest to do anything special. But um, the purificator and the corporal especially do. And yes. in this case, you know, it could have could have touched the precious blood, or, or I'm sorry, the, um, um, the the sacred host. So you're just covering all your bases the best you can. And when you think about it, it's actually kind of cool to think about. Mm-hmm. Um, because <laughs> <No>. <laughs> the yeah. real presence, you know, and it's just, well, it's just so easy to forget that that's what's happening. And mm -hmm. I just think my appreciation grew when I became sacrist and just understanding mm -hmm. this is, it's not something I considered just as a regular secular person going to mass on Sunday or maybe sometime during the week. I mean, you, you just mm -hmm. don't get that closely united. And I feel that hopefully like by this talk that'll kind of um open some people's thoughts a little bit more closely during mass i know i, I don't know if it was was it last year at the children's retreat we had the mass theme i think so yeah. we yeah, did well, do um like some things about that and talking about that because mm -hmm. i was really inspired to want to share those things so I, I think it's interesting and i just think it helps um Again, with the appreciation, so well, it's important, important <laughs> for lay people, um, and especially like children, because it's better to start at a young age. For them to be able to tell you what's on the altar, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and, to to explain, you no know, candlesticks, good, uh, car, uh, mass cards, good, uh, yes. you know, the crucifix. I will say some of those kids from the retreat actually still do remember uh, one of my students little girl, she, she knows what the tabernacle is and she knows that the tabernacle is Jesus' home on earth. And she's even said that's her favorite piece is the tabernacle. And I'm like, that's a good choice. The child, <laughs> so, the child has got taste. Yes. So, and her brother knows quite a bit of all the different vessels and things. And, and that, and that, and, that, and that's important too. Like I, I've, I've had a say to a server, um, uh, uh, like get me a purificator, get me this. And they just stare at me. And I just say, okay, you know the thing that's on the chalice when I come out for mass? Yeah, get that. I mean, I asked one boy for a humeral, uh I asked him for a, uh, I told him I had to get the humeral veil. And he comes back with like, like a lavabo towel or something. Mm -hmm. And I just look, <sighs> you just sigh and say, all right, you know, give me the, uh, no, 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 no. Humeral veil goes around my goes around my shoulders uh, shoulder during benediction oh that one which one pick you choose yeah <laughs> you choose just get it over here well and it's interesting because uh, you know we talked about we'd share some of our mishaps there was one time mm -hmm. when it was a sunday mass i forgot to put a purificator in the chalice mm -hmm. um and 
I remember, you know, Avatari starting, I sit down, I'm reading out of my missile and all of a sudden I just felt the stillness and I look up and the bishop's looking at me and he says, purificator. I'm like, oh, well, so I got up and got it um, because it was going to be quicker for me to get it than the altar server. I mean, I knew exactly where they're kept. Yep. Kind of had, I want to say it was like a walk of shame, but it's just like, oh, how could I forget that? You know, because I, and I do things in order, a certain order, uh, much mm -hmm. like when I used to open up at uh, Panera Bread every morning. I did, th <laughs> you did things in a particular order because you did not want to forget yep. something. And I had done that once or twice. So you learn that you do them in the same order. Mm -hmm. um, definitely you're, has you're, its You're benefits. less likely to miss it. Um, yeah, you don't you don't want to forget something during no, mass. Yeah, it, no. you really it happens. It was an honest mistake. <laughs> I, I'm actually trying to think of some of my mishaps, particularly as a sacristan, but it often overlaps my being a server, also being sacristan. Probably my biggest sacristan, and it, it is a partly a sacristan mishap because it was a talk was Holy Saturday, and I and I and I we, we had to remove the veils the, the the purple coverings of the statues and and i oh. thought no and down in lubbock you know on, on the altar father has these really nice um pictures of saint francis and saint Clair to the altar and he had those covered but they're so particular in how they come on that they uh you you, you need to get like a one of those long arm grabbers and oh. <laughs> and get it set and I thought it was between uh, the services at the mass that he wanted me to take those down and then all, and then, and then just take everything down before the Gloria because we didn't have the manpower at the time. And then when I came back out, you know, he was not too happy with me. And it says, and, and apparently I misunderstood what he said, or I asked a question, he misunderstood me. I'm right. not really sure what happened anymore. It was so many years ago. But it was quite a bit of shame that you forgot something, and you know, it, 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 when 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 you are a sacristan, you are the one who sets everything into place before the service. So you want to make sure everything's out, and you want to double check, especially mm -hmm. when it's a special service like yeah, you're going into Holy Week. Holy week. <laughs> you want to make sure that everything's in place. Because you know, I, I I have forgotten things, and had to be told, hey, you have to go back and get this, and I got to ask, what is that? Um, yet, you know, it, 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 it's uh, you know, it could even be something so much as like, oh, I forgot we have to light the fire. Right. Well, ah. for us here, in the time I've been here, we've only had Holy Week services twice, and one was actually because of COVID. He didn't travel, but the first year I did it, I mean, it was. Thankfully, it was it, it, the bishop's ass. He was like, well, here, here are the rubrics. Just follow along. He he was helping me along the way. Because there's no way I would have figured any of this out. Because I am I was never on that side of Holy Week services. Mm -hmm. You know, at best, growing up, I attended it, maybe sung in the choir. But even, like, choir stuff wasn't. Um, yeah. It was mostly the men. Mostly I remember the men. Yep. When he was talking about um, the, uh, oh, what hymn is that for? Holy Thursday? Oh, or the Pange Lingua. Pange He's talking about the Pange Lingua. I said, I've never sung that in my life. <laughs> so uh, I think I actually brought that up before. Um, yeah, but I remember yeah. the second year that we had Holy Week. And I mean, I was a little bit more familiar with it. So it was easier, but it was, mm -hmm. it was, it's really nonstop all those days. And yep. I remember after Easter Sunday morning mass, because we had whole, you know, Saturday and then Sunday morning. And after breakfast, and we're just kind of relaxing, and the bishop, you know, thanked me. He said, "I recognize you did a, you were working very hard all week." And I started to get a little emotional about it because I didn't really think about it that way, you know. I mean, I, I knew that he appreciated all I was doing because it wasn't even just getting things up for for services; it was also taking care of other daily duties and meals and um, just a lot going on. But um, I, I was glad. I knew he. Knew I was working hard. It was just kind of nice to hear <laughs> that it was appreciated. Well, it is nice to hear, and and, yeah. and it's one of those things that you kind of encourage people mm -hmm. in, in your church and to to volunteer, yeah, um, to be willing to help. You know, doing you know the cleaning, the vacuuming. Like, what yes. can I do? You know, maybe you can learn to polish 
uh, help the sacristan, help the priest out. Um, like one of the things that stands out are like Christmas decorations and and uh, um, well, for us here, Easter decorations as well. But that doesn't take nearly as long. But, uh, you know, you, you have people uh, who are unable to help. I mean, for the longest time down in Lubbock, Father Joseph did not have the people who could commit to help decorate. He had to do all that decorating himself, and he does quite a bit of it. And and then the years I was there, I was doing all the decorating, and we'd be decorating up until like 10 o'clock Christmas Eve. And then you got to go do the Mass, sleep a few hours, do another Mass, and do another Mass, and then mm -hmm. I had to cook breakfast. <laughs> And, 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 uh, I remember the last year I was there, I was so worn out and so beat. I, I was, I was falling asleep while I was frying the hash browns. And I'm just like, father, can't you just have like a peanut butter sandwich or something? And he goes, usually they <laughs> had it's Christmas. Travel. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't eat any. I, only thing I ate, only thing I ate on Christmas that year, um, was, um, fruitcake. I was so tired. That's all I ate. Yeah. And I, and I slept. Well, I, I think you kind of opened up like an interesting point. Cause I, sometimes I feel that people want to help, but they always just sometimes, or not always, they sometimes just don't know like, well, what does that mean? What can I do? Mm -hmm. Um, I would say talk to your priest or if you know who the sacristan is, cause, um, mm -hmm. I will definitely, if you really want to help, there's things that you can help me with. I'm sure there's things to help you with. Um, or even mm -hmm. on the side where like, well, you can't come and decorate, but maybe, you know, think ahead. It's like, well, but I could bring them a meal, you know, mm -hmm. you know, that would yeah. help save time too. Yeah. Just, you know, just kind of opening up the, uh, yeah. things oh, up right, a little bit in that way. Just, How might... can I help? Yeah. How can I be active? And that's actually something I talked about with my first communion student a couple of years ago. Um, going over the uh, six laws of the church and, you know, one of them is contribute to the support of the church. And I told her, you know, I realized that, you know, probably as young as you are, you maybe get an allowance. It's not much, but there are other things you can do. You can help or she, they're, they're a, a mission family. So they have mass in their home. I said, but so the day that you're going to have mass in your home, you can help fix the meal for the priest afterwards. You can help clean things, mm -hmm. uh, get things ready is taking an active role and participating in that requirement of contributing to the support of the church. It's not necessarily always just money, obviously, or, you know, tithing is a whole different subject, but just looking at the perspective of a child, like, well, what can I do? I remember growing up in, when we were in Milwaukee, we used to have that cleaning day, the day after Thanksgiving. And I loved going to that. Um, it's a whole bunch of people from church would get together and clean various mm -hmm. aspects of the church. It was a lot of fun. Um, yep. Many hands make light work. Uh, but yeah. I also think a lot of people think too many hands and it's frustrating. I get it. There needs to be organization. I've learned over the years that sometimes you have to be very clear of what you expect people to do yep. or you, just you have to assign. Go, or go approach people. It's like, Hey, I could really use a hand in this. Do you have some free time to help me? Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's like, yeah, it's what big thing is that if I need something done, I go to somebody cause they don't think to ask. Right. Um, if it's something that someone can do on a regular basis, or maybe they can only do it uh, one, -time deal. one one time deal because of their schedule, that's fine. Yep. But you know, some by Mayor Bishop Giles in a sermon he gave many years ago, um, that I that I was listening to back when I stocked shelves, uh, <laughs> and he reminded me that but this, the main topic of the sermon had to do with. Uh, the sense of the sacred in church itself. But in that, I was reminding the people that, you know, this is your church. Mm -hmm. This is your, the church building you go to. You have a responsibility to me, to help it, or its maintenance and to make sure that the uh, sacred services um, happen um, as, as um, fluid, uh, flu, uh, Fluently, fluently, as possible. <laughs> Come on, you you, you, gotta, you gotta help me out here, sister. It, that that the, the services would uh, happen as gracefully, <laughs> gracefully as possible. That's not the word I know, but I'm looking for, and you're not helping me, sister. Oh, I'm sorry, Father. It's because you're doing too much sacristy. Niamala. 
doing too much sacristy work. You're exhausted. <laughs> you can't do too much. I'd rather, I'd rather, I would rather be, you know, there polishing. Um, but it, yeah, definitely, and, even on this perspective is, you know, as members of the congregation doing your part, just making sure you, you know, you clean up after yourself when attending mass. I mean, don't leave your books laying <laughs> that, around, that, that, your that tissues. Um, that would really help a lot too. Uh, I don't it, really it was, encounter it was, that too much, but just something yeah, to think about. Yeah, because remember, you know, it's not like some people are getting paid to do this. Mm-hmm. You know, they're here to help. They're here to help. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're staying at somebody's home, you're a little more self-conscious of yourself. So you're not going to be the one who kicks off your shoes and, and, or, you know, lounges on the couch. I mean, you wouldn't do that in church, I would assume. But um, if there's a mess that's left, you, you pick it up. You make sure mm-hmm. things look good when you leave. When you leave. Well, and, it, and the thing is also realizing that other people that come visit or aren't part of the congregation but come and see it the first time, impressions make a lot. And if there's like they books do. strewn everywhere and it looks like, well, this is this person's spot and only that person's spot, you know, it's not very inviting for visitors. Um, mm-hmm. So just kind of realizing that this is God's home. And yeah. um <laughs> Well, yeah, that, tidiness. That, yeah, is that's important. Yeah, that is the that is the important thing. And I'm not knocking the people that have do have their specific place that they always sit. There's nothing wrong with that. But and when you leave for the the day, you should take your things with you. Well, it's kind of like this agreement that people have that just they kind of understand it. Mm-hmm. Um, I I have not. I think maybe. I don't even remember details like once or twice that might have come up. That's my spot. And you're just like, no, it's not. Uh, I pay for that spot. Well, you haven't been paying me for that spot. I don't think that I, I've heard of cases like that. And yeah. I may have encountered it. I, I really don't remember. But you have to remind some, But mo- most of the reactions I get from people is like they don't have a spot. This is where they normally sit. No one right. has come up and sat there. And if someone does, they they move. They'll they'll mm-hmm. go to a you know an, a, another pew back or something or pew forward. Mm-hmm. I it's just um, <laughs> it's just one of those things that um, it, we can take for granted if if, mm-hmm. if we don't put forth a, a conscious effort to making sure the church is kept well and it looks exactly. in good condition and and the sacristan yeah is the first line of defense in that regard Mm -hmm. Um, but you know their duties cross over to other things you know cleaning the vessels cleaning like the lavabo dish and that dusting the altar and 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 the statues and just making sure everything is as neat and tidy as possible so whatever we can do to um mitigate that by taking up the responsibility of cleaning pews or or vacuuming the church or uh, arranging to get the flowers and you know these are the type of things that um, make a difference mm-hmm. and what even more so uh, it's helping with the um, you know polishing and an interesting thing though that normally speaking only a subdeacon could touch sacred vessels uh, but due doing to a uh, to the situation we have not having sub deacons in every church and you have a sacristan the church has given a dispensation allowing the sacristan to touch the sacred vessels which i'll tell you it was freaky you know i remember the last time i really felt that way was the first time i had opened the tabernacle and the blessed Mm -hmm. sacrament was there and i was a deacon and it was i was because i was allowed as a, um, to, as a deacon to distribute communion the days that Father Joseph would be out of town. So the people who, who was really the normal group would come to mass like every day. So it was a lot of them, hey, you know, you won't be coming for mass, but you could still come and receive communion. So I had to be there at that you know, normal time and distribute. And I just remember the first time I opened the tabernacle and I and, and I actually had the thoughts like, what's this gonna be? I mean, what is this gonna be experiencing? And I, I I'm picturing in my my imagination, it's gonna be like a light just shining out of, of the tabernacle as I open the door, even though I knew that's probably not gonna happen. <laughs> but that that was just kind of the um I, I don't know, uh 
the hope that there's a spiritual light. Well, there is a spiritual light mm-hmm. shining yes. in the tabernacle because it's our Lord. He is there. He is present. Um, it, 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 it's just, uh, <laughs> I guess that is a Sackerson story in a way. Um, but just making sure that, you no, know, everything is the way it should be. You know, like the, even the, the, the claws in the tabernacle itself mm-hmm. need to be cleaned and need to be maintained. And that's, <laughs> we actually took ours apart. I think it was 20, it was 2020. It was an ordeal. I mean, it got really clean and redid. You took something. the tabernacle itself apart? Uh-huh. Holy guacamole. I, I think I probably have pictures somewhere. Um, it was quite the uh, the experience. And then I, I sewed uh, a new uh, curtain inside. Um, it, it, it was, it was, it, I don't think we're going to do that again anytime soon, but um, it is quite the project. I have take, I've taken sacred vessels apart before to give them a good cleaning, like especially mm-hmm. monstrances. Oh, uh, I haven't done that yet. Oh, um, ours is pretty, um, pretty good. If you do it, make sure you, you, you block in the full day. Well, uh, I'll tell you with the tabernacle, it, I mean, we had to commit to it because, you know, we needed it. For- <laughs> I, I want to say that did eat up our entire day. Uh, but kind of going back to when you talk about with the sacred vessels and vessels, vessels, and who's allowed to hold them. I still remember the first time I carried out the chalice to set up the altar and I was shaking because I'm like, I, I'm not worthy. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. it, was, it was very overwhelming. It's like, I, is this really okay? Am I I'm really allowed to touch this? Mm-hmm. And even putting the key in the tabernacle. And of course, I've read in a book that I have that is as far as I can go. I can put the key in the tabernacle. I cannot turn the key. And I don't, obviously. Uh, but I remember that being a very specific thing. But it's even even that little task is very... I'm a, not overwhelming, but there, there's something to it. There's, there's a significance. There's a, there's a vibe going on because it's like, you know, we're telling, we're teaching. We know that Jesus is present in the blessed sacrament and he's there in the tabernacle. And like, that's super duper close. And that's like the closest I can get. And sometimes, uh, I sometimes just like to ponder and think about, uh, our priests and their hands, those hands get to touch our Lord. Like, how cool is that? that? That is pretty cool. And so sometimes you, you just got to pause and look at your priests and thank God they're here doing this for us. Mm-hmm. Um, I suppose like this might be a good time to share one of my mishaps, though, because uh, they do happen. And this was a pretty big oopsie. I um, And I don't do it this way anymore, but this one mass, we needed a ciborium. And so I decided, well, I'll carry the chalice and the ciborium at the same time. Oh. And somehow my core got caught onto the nozzle of the holy water font and it started to tip and there really wasn't much I could do to stop it. And either I drop what I have in my hands or that comes crashing down. And so <laughs> it, luckily it was not full. It was near empty, but still it was like, oh boy, oh boy. So I go set everything up, right? Put the holy water font back up right side and I'm just go to my spot kneeling waiting because I uh, I was usually there um, probably about a good half hour before the bishop came mm-hmm. for office and mass and so he comes and the thing is if uh, he wasn't barefoot if we weren't barefoot he probably wouldn't notice but obviously I couldn't just you know not tell him so <laughs> I go up to the communion rail where he's kneeling and I said um there's been a there's been an accident and so and it 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 was, it was truly I, an accident. It's not like I, you know, I mean, I, what could you do? I, I He wasn't going to scold me because it's not like I walked out of the sacristy skipping along and fooling, goofing off. It was mm-hmm. just your cord and your rosary get caught on things. I'm going to tell you right it, now, it it's one of the hazards of the, the habit. And it, and it is really annoying from time, especially <laughs> when you're in a rush. And for me, I usually get caught on some of these metal folding chairs as i'm walking like i start dragging come on let loose and and when you really need it to get loose that's when it's really caught and you're hanging there but you know you don't, well <laughs> well it's just i'm sorry it's just basically the one time this is back when we were locking up the chicken coop and my car uh-huh. got stuck and i'm just sitting there like what am i gonna do of course, like, duh, you just unwrap your cord and you're fine but uh i think my habit once got stuck and stuck and the door was locked and Luckily, I, I 
I can't remember how I fixed it, but I'm just sitting there thinking, and it was winter. I was like, if I'm not coming in by a certain time, will someone come look for me? So after that, I just said to the bitch, I was like, if I'm not back by 7.30, it might mean I'm stuck. <laughs> so You just um, have a, just always take a big flashlight with you, one of those really good LEDs, and then you're back there and you get stuck, you just wave that thing. Eventually someone will notice it. Maybe, but you or guess, have um, your cell phone on you and call. I usually don't keep the cell phone on me. Um, oh, but anyway, that that I have got caught in the door. Of course, when it's your cord and then it gets stuck and it tightens on you. And yeah, then... <laughs> yeah, they're trying to just trying to get some give, a little bit of give just to get this thing off of you. It's like suck that gut in and try to get you know, I <laughs> Now, you mentioned about you knocking over a holy water font. I never knocked one over, but it was kind of funny. It, you know, funny, not really in a haha way, but ironic. You know, it, it was, I just filled the holy water up and I just blessed it. And that day, that was the day that one of the children who's in a wheelchair knocks it over. And I just just could shake my head and go, of course, it would happen the day that I just blessed some new holy water. Um, so it was quite the mess. Mm -hmm. I said, I, it's like, you know, the kid felt bad about it. He says, well, don't worry. We, we really needed to bless the carpet. So <laughs> it's fine. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I you encounter these things and and like how do you react to it? Well, first, you know, don't get overly dramatic about it. Um, you just, you know, uh, try to handle the situation the best you can and uh, you move forward. Absolutely, uh, it, it's uh, it, it's finding the right balance between making sure you're maintaining the proper respect and reverence while you're in church in the blessed sacrament, but also handling the situation that maybe um, come, uh, that comes awry. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And uh, which bring, it brings like the, like a final thought, I guess I could kind of a final thought, the idea of um, how a sacristan acts during mass. It reminds me of a, um, of a story Bishop Lewis told me, uh, when he was giving tours to people uh, back when he was, uh, I think he was a student of theology up in uh, Montreal, and people would come and visit, and then they would take him on tours. Then you saw this man, you know, just, you know, walk in, you know, barely genuflecting and going up, moving here, barely genuflecting, going really fast. And people came and asked, is that man an atheist? And the brother said, no, that's, uh, that's the sacristan. You know, because there, there's a certain amount of, you know, things you have to get done mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, I have to genuflect, I have to do this. It's like, well, uh, you still have to maintain the proper respect while you're doing the job. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's just it, it, these it, these things happen. You don't you don't want to become um, scrupulous about it. Sure. Paranoid, but but you have to find that middle road. So you can, you know, do the job the best you can or help with the job the best you can to the greater honor and glory of God and um, enjoy it. Enjoy what you're doing. It just enjoy the fact that you get to play such a, a, a intricate role in the divine services. Right. Uh, and again, if, if, if you also want to connect more and do more, definitely talk to your priest talk to the priest he, he will help to contract it there'll, there'll be something for you i'm sure no, th think of this way back in the old testament only the levites were allowed to do anything as far as setting up for divine services you know, and, and the subdeacon is considered you know a levite in, in a very um literal sense but just like as saint peter said we share in a spiritual priesthood. You also share a, a spiritual um, Levitical um, position in that you're able to assist, make sure that the church is well kept, to make sure that the, the priest has what he needs. Um, 
and uh, that, that the sacrifice will happen smooth as possible. Um, and the more people you have involved who know what they're doing, the easier these things will be. And you'll be able to spend more time in prayer. So there, there's so many positives. And, and again, if you're doing it for God, you should, you should give it your best. You should give it your all. And, uh, and so, I, and so I, ultimately, I just really enjoy the fact that I get to be, uh, I've been a sacristan and uh, learning to appreciate uh, really what uh, I, I did then and what I get to do now. I think every young man who's going to be a priest should be a sacristan for a small bit of time. Mm -hmm. So we can really come to appreciate uh, the duties, uh, the, the, the trials, um, but also um, the wonder that's involved. I like that, the wonder that's involved. That's good. Mm -hmm. Deo gracias. Deo gracias. <laughs> <laughs>